Hello, I am Jim Elizondo from Real World Ranching, where our goal is to help you achieve maximum profitability while improving your land the fastest. Now, I am going to talk about why pink eye, foot rot, strawberry wart, and other health problems like grass staggers or grass tetany occur mostly on cool season grasses. We need to understand that cool season grasses and warm season grasses are very, very different. This means that we need to manage them differently in terms of stage of maturity at grazing, best genetics for each one, and under the total grazing program. And I am going to explain why this is so important. First, most of the energy in cool season grasses is in the form of sugars. While in warm season grasses, most of their energy is in the form of oils or fats. So why is this so important? Sugars or soluble carbohydrates in cool season forages can create acidosis. Just like feeding too much molasses or starchy grains, which digestion creates lactic acid, and this creates acidosis. And over time, if continued, laminitis, which is when the hoofs get swollen and very tender and ruminants cannot walk due to the pain. Oils and fats in warm season forages, on the other hand, do not create lactic acid when digested into the rumen and do not create acidosis. The main problem with warm season grasses is their very high lignin and fiber content, which reduces consumption. And this coupled with much less energy and protein in them means a lower average daily gain in livestock than when in cool season grasses, which are higher in energy and protein, and they are lower in fiber and lignin. We need to remember that fiber and lignin in the ruminant's diet limits intake due to the fiber plugging the digestive system or slowing the passage of roughage in the digestive system. If you had taken my total grazing program online course, you can remember this being explained in module four called nutrition. Now let's go back to pink eye, foot rot, strawberry wart, and other problems caused by lush and young cool season grasses. I said before that cool season grasses are lower in fiber, higher in protein, and higher in energy than warm season grasses. So why is it that they can create a health problem in your livestock? Problems that are just not there when creating warm season grasses. This means there is an explanation for this and I am going to give it to you. So if you know of anybody that can benefit from this podcast, please share the link with them. The younger the cool season forage is, the higher the protein in it will be, the higher the energy and the lower the fiber in it. We also know that the energy in cool season grasses is in the form of sugars and sugars create lactic acid when digested then we know that too much protein in relation to available energy allows for ammonia, a gas, to be formed in the rumen, and it's this gas which creates protein bloat. Ammonia is highly alkaline. Please remember this as I am going to come back to this in a little while. As we should know, fiber is required in the diet of a ruminant for the ruminant to be able to ruminate, to chew their cut. This is very, very important as if we only give attention to high protein and high energy, we will cause our livestock to scour from giving them too young cool season grasses or allowing them to selectively graze them. Now, let me tell you a secret. When grazing selectively, your livestock will always select the highest energy parts of the plant and the best species as they have a sweet tooth. Did you know that the tops of grasses have the highest energy, in this case, sugars, and also the highest protein? They also contain the lowest amount of fiber, and this is why our livestock prefers that. So if you want the best health for your livestock, do not allow selective grazing, especially 
when on immature cool season grasses. Allow them to mature some more and implement the total grazing program so you can harvest a much higher percentage of the available grass, which will give you a longer rest period to your green grazing area, which will then produce much more and develop stronger and deeper roots, all the while improving the health of your livestock. So what does this have to do with pink eye, foot rot, strawberry wart, grass staggers, and other health problems? Remember, I previously asked you to remember that ammonia releasing the rumen from a diet too high in protein to available energy was very alkaline? It happens that for the pathogens that create pink eye, foot rot, strawberry warts, and others, they require a high pH to thrive and reproduce. They require a pH above eight or nine, with seven being neutral and below seven acidic. You may say, hey, you just said that sugar in the immature or selectively grazed cold season grasses created acidosis in the rumen, and you would be correct. But acidosis in the rumen does not counteract alkalosis in the blood and eventually the whole body. This means your animals get the worst of both, acidosis in the rumen and the gas ammonia being released and entering the bloodstream through the rumen walls, which are gas permeable. And then the blood takes this ammonia to the organs in the body. And that is where the high pH or alkalinity creates havoc with your livestock health. Now I'm going to tell you something very interesting. Pathogen, microorganisms require five things to thrive and reproduce. One, a food source. And if your animal is alive, there is a food source. Two, correct temperature. Well, again, if your animal is alive, it is warm enough. Three, moisture. A live animal contains moisture. Four, the infectious agent. The cause in microorganism it's usually in the air or close by, so we cannot make sure it does not enter your livestock body. Five, the correct pH for that specific microorganism to thrive. And in those health problems, the microorganisms require a pH of above eight to nine. And remember, seven is neutral or normal. So this means that if we take one of these three, five requisites for the pathogen, to create a health problem, if we take one off, it will simply not thrive and we eliminate the problem. While we cannot do anything about the first four requisites, we can certainly change the fifth by implementing the total grazing program and allowing our cool season grasses to mature some more before grazing them. Conclusion and recap. One. Many health problems like pink eye, foot rot, strawberry wart develop when cool season grasses are grazed when in the green season. Two, cool season grasses have most of their energy in the form of sugars and are higher in energy and protein than warm season grasses while being lower in fiber. Three, this means that they have the potential to give a much better individual animal performance. Four, these cool season grasses, when grazed at an immature stage or grazed selectively, will create health problems from a lack of fiber and an excess of protein to available energy plus acidosis in the rumen. Five, this creates a high pH in the whole body of your animal and a high pH is needed for these pathogens to thrive. Six, by implementing the total grazing program, you can avoid these health problems and increase your grass productivity by allowing a longer rest period, which will grow stronger and deeper roots in your forages and create more humus per year. Now, I want to go back to the recap and conclusion in, in number uh, four. I said that an excess of sugar will create acidosis in the rumen. How can you check this in, in your cows? Look at the manure. One day, two day old manure will 
develop a white cross on it if they have acidosis from grazing high sugar parts or plants that are cool season grass. Well, I hope you like this podcast and you can put it into practice. Thank you. And until next time, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or YouTube, or join us for the weekly email at www.rwranching.com slash join. Have a great day.